Hey guys, welcome to Stock Talk with Mike. I wanna to talk to you about a company I just very recently initiated a position in during that big tech sell-off we've seen the last few weeks or so before we had this nice juicy rebound the last few days, which has been awesome. And that company is Skills, ticker SKLZ. They're the online gaming platform that through the games that are offered on the platform allow gamers to compete for real cash prizes. So it's quite unique in that way. And these games of skill are not considered gambling, so it actually gets around a lot of that gambling legislation, which can be an issue in a number of jurisdictions as well. So a really interesting company. But before I, before I get into the details, it'd be great if you consider subscribing to this channel. I like to cover high growth, disruptive companies and long-term investing. And it'd be great also if you'd like this video. I have to start by saying when I first looked into skills, when I first heard about the SPAC, when it was announced several months ago, I wasn't 100% sold. I looked at the website, looked through the games. I even downloaded the app and tried playing a few of them. And they, honestly, the games just don't really appeal to me personally, at least the games that are offered right now. So they're like a lot of like the Tetris or puzzle type games or card games like Solitaire or Bingo too. And those kind of games just don't personally interest me. Um, but just listening to the CEO on the conference call recently and, and reading more articles on the company, I came to understand that this is just the beginning for this company and there's a lot more, I think, in store for the future. And that these type of games really do have a place and they're easy to pick up and play and have really high retention. So they definitely have a place and there is a market for it, even if that person isn't me. And I have to appreciate that. I think of another company that I really bullish on and that I... I gravitate towards and I have a large position in Unity Software, which is like a, a 3D engine de uh, for developers for creating these really complex, um, amazing graphic type games for both mobile, but also console. And it's, it's just such a stark difference, right? But this is quite a different model, quite a different concept from that. Just a few comments from Andrew Paradise, their CEO during the recent earnings conference call. He said, today gaming is larger than movies, music, and books at 86 billion today. Mobile is the largest segment of gaming and the fastest growing market in the media and entertainment. So um, skills is 100% mobile. So it's in the largest, fastest growing segment of gaming as well. So I, I really like that it's a pure mobile play. Um, and you look at like a lot of the big game developers like, you know, Activision Blizzard, Take-Two, EA. They've made a lot of acquisitions recently in the mobile space as they're trying, they realize that's a big leg of growth for them moving forward is having a strong mobile component. So by having a platform of mobile games that developers gravitate to and try and get monetized through just makes a lot of sense. That's what I really like about skills. And... Um, we powered more than 2 billion tournaments a year, enabling developers to monetize through compensation. So obviously, um, like if they have a sticky business that like if gamers are going to the skills platform, developers are going to flock there and want to develop games that they can get monetized on the platform. So that, that just bodes well for the future of skills. Um, in 2020, 2.6 million monthly active users or MAU enjoy games on our platform. So, and that's a 63% increase from 2019, which is great. And the average player users spend roughly an hour per day on the platform. A couple really interesting points right here. So in 2020, 13% of our users engage in prize competitions. So that's where they maybe pay a fee to enter a tournament versus 2% for the average mobile game for in-app purchases. So if you were a developer, obviously you'd be very incentivized to develop a game for the skills platform where it could be very lucrative, where 13% of people are like paying up to wager on these cash for these cash prizes versus a, just quite a low rate of only 2% for tip, traditional in-app purchases. So that's very interesting. And we've continued to invest in our synchronous gameplay ecosystem. We're expanding the reach of the platform to enable new gaming genres, ranging from real-time strategy to fighting, for racing to first person shooters. And I just think this is phenomenal. So this is where they need to go. And if this is any bit true, I'm just fascinated to see how this plays out. That's what I wanna see. I wanna see wagering for money on like a racing game or a fighting game, first person shooters. Like this is could be phenomenal. So if that can happen through the skills platform, this is just gonna blow up. So this is really fascinating to me, this piece right here. 
So as I mentioned, they also just reported Q4 earnings and revenues looked really good. Fourth quarter revenue of 68 million, which is up 95% year over year. So almost 100% revenue growth we're talking here. And for the full year, revenue was 230 million versus the 225 million they gave guidance for for 2020. So that's great. And that was up 92% year over year for the full year. And they also gave guidance for 2021. They expect revenues of 366 million. So that guidance is for about 59% year over year. So I'd like to see them actually beat that guidance. So it is just guidance. It's not a real number yet, right? So, um, and that is a bit of a deceleration that we saw from 2020. So definitely something to watch out for. They also go on to mention that it was a 20th straight quarter of revenue growth. So that's, that's pretty impressive as well. They're obviously um, still very far from profitable, um, actually losing a lot of money. So that's another thing to watch is if they can improve their margins moving forward as well. Also, one thing that stood out as not so positive also from their earnings report was their monthly active users was actually up 20% on the quarter year over year, which is okay, but not really that stellar um, in regards to what we saw with the revenue growth side of things. And it was actually down a bit compared to Q3, which was actually the highest ever though at 2.7 million. It was down to about 2.4 million in Q4, which was actually the lowest they had seen. The monthly active users in Q4 was lower than Q1, 2, or 3. So that was quite interesting. And But it was all still up from obviously 2019. So there was growth there. But again, that would be an area, a metric I would I would like to continue to pay attention to moving forward here. So it's not all roses here for skills. Um, definitely there's some areas here that I want to see improve and I'll be watching closely over quarters to come. So I kind of say like this is a company like I really want to be invested in, but I was kind of like there was some reservations and now I'm kind of like almost looking for holes here and and I'm kind of watching it closely. I think I got it still on a bit of a tight leash, I think. And ARPU, so that is average revenue per monthly active user, which is a common metric used for this type of company, and was actually up substantially. So they're actually getting more revenue out of each customer, and that's why they got that explosive growth. So that's actually a really good sign, though, for, for skills moving forward as well. So the average revenue per active user was $9.42, and that was up from Q4 of 2019, where it was $5.86, and well up from Q3 of 2020, where it was $7.49. So it just blew any previous number out of the water there. So that's really good to see that they're actually getting more out of each user. So skills market cap is about 10 billion, and I think of where this company could be even five years from now, and I see a mobile gaming platform that maybe has games at that point across multiple genres. I could see them being way bigger than that, even just five years from now. I could easily see them being, without running any numbers, being a $30 billion company. Being a 3X from here would just be, would be great returns. And I think that is doable, really. They do trade fairly expensive. They trade at about uh, 44 times sales currently. And looking at the guidance they gave for 2021, the current share price would put them at about... 27 times sales so that's looking a little better um, and honestly like these high growth software stocks are trading at these kind of high multiples right now it's just it's common across the board so it's kind of the way it is but that's the nice thing about these high growth stocks is they actually grow into these atrocious valuations eventually and sometimes fairly quickly when you have like numbers like 100 percent growth rates um, profit margin, obviously atrocious, the negative 44%. That was largely due to stock-based compensation last quarter as well and some other um, development charges as well. But their quarterly revenues of in the 90 percentile is just phenomenal. They reported earnings on um, Wednesday, March 10th after the bell. And I'm recording this uh, video on Thursday evening. So this is looking at the chart for Thursday, March 11th. And they went up 8%. So basically the day after reporting earnings. And they actually were up even higher than that at one point, but tailed off a little bit right before the close, but then we're up again 4% after hours. So it'll be interesting to see what happens tomorrow um, on the 12th when this video is released. But really good response overall um, to the earnings report. And this is the six month chart of skills. I've been following it since, I guess, late in 2020. Watch it climb from $20 a share to 30 and then almost go straight up to 44 before we saw the big high growth stock sell off. And at that point, I'm sure I had a fair amount of FOMO going on and didn't think I was gonna get into skills and thought I had missed it. 
But uh, yeah, I started aggressively buying um, companies on my watch list and also adding to some of my high conviction stocks that I owned as well. And one of the skill, one of the new stocks I picked up was Skills. So I started buying at around thirty-two dollars a share, nibbled away at some more at twenty-nine, and then pretty close to actually the recent lows of twenty-three dollars a share. And then with the recent increase in share price um, after the earnings report or in the last couple of days, um, I'm pretty close to break even right around now, and pretty happy with my position size. Given that I still have some questions about what the future is going to look like for Skills, and I'm not not my highest conviction stock, but it is a company I'm really interested in. Um, I'm going to keep it about this weighting. I probably won't add if it continues to drop any further. Um, but it's about a 3% weighting currently in my portfolio. Average analyst price target for skills. So the one year price target is $31 per share. So even with the 8% share price we saw on our increase in share price we saw on Wednesday, that would still be 11.6% um, upside um, over the next year for skills. Obviously, yesterday's move drastically impacts that, right? If you looked at this the day before, you'd be like, oh, it's got it's got 20% upside. <laughs> and honestly, you take these uh, analyst price targets for a grain of salt, but maybe that helps add to your conviction a little bit. And the infamous ARK Invest and Kathy Wood have been aggressively buying skills and actually growing their position size and skills. And that's the part you want to really pay attention to. Um, in their ARCW internet ETF. It's now a middle of the pack holding in that fund as it continues to like sort of move up the ranks. On March 11th, the day I recorded this, they actually bought $17.8 million of skills and that actually increased the weighting in their portfolio by 0.25%. I think that's something you have to watch. A lot of people talk about what ARC is buying and that doesn't mean a whole lot because when someone buys the ETF, they have to buy the shares of the companies that they hold in that ETF, right? That's what they have to do. But what you want to see is because of the actively managed ETF, if they're changing the position weighting in their portfolio. So in this case, 0.25% is actually a very big, a very significant move given the size of the fund and the number of positions that they have. So that, that's definitely a high conviction stock for them. So I mentioned that I'm really interested in this potential move for skills into other genres like first person shooters and racing games. And I think that'll be like so critical for the large continued growth and expansion of skills. But I'm willing to invest in a company that hasn't hit those milestones yet, especially if they have solid revenues and large growth already, which skills does. So I like that. That could be that kind of phased approach. That could be that next leg of growth for them. They've also talked about international expansion. So they're looking to move into India um, in the near future. And that could be another big leg of growth for them. So I actually like that, right? Like I don't want to wait till they're the company I want to see them to be. I want to invest in them before they're that big, right? But, and they do have solid revenue growth now, but I, I would like to see some of these things come to fruition. Another really interesting announcement they re recently had was this partnership with the National Football League where they're going to host this um, global game developer challenge, which will allow um, developers to compete for the opportunity to develop an NFL themed mobile game for the skills platform that the um, NFL and skills will jointly uh, market and whatnot as well. So that'll be really interesting, that exposure to NFL fans to potentially and sports games players to skills. I just kind of am curious um, what kind of game this is going to be. Is this going to have the feel of like a traditional skills game? Is it going to be like sort of a play on the NFL? Is this going to be like a real sports game? Like what does that even entail? I have no idea. <laughs> Maybe this is a move into mobile sports games for skills. Um, uh, we'll see. So very interesting though of what something like this could be. So that's about all I have for you today. Let me know what you think about skills. Um, and thank you so much for watching and as always, happy investing. <laughs>